He loves chemistry because it's fun. That, that makes it crazy, crazy. Then he's the one to teach you chemistry because it's fun. He's a chemistry coach. Do, do, do. He's, he's a chemistry coach. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, you, you need to be moving a little faster. You see, we have chemistry problems. The chemistry problems need to be done. But you, you're moving awfully slow. You need to pick up your rate, you see. Who are you patterning your actions after, huh? I teach you. To move fast. I said do that chemistry problem. Get her done. What do you do? You just lollygagging around not doing your chemistry. Well let me tell you something. If you don't do your chemistry faster your rate's gonna be low. You need to pick up your rate. What is it that controls the rate of how well you do those chemistry problems, huh? Ought to be a law. Rate law. I'm going to come up with that. A rate law for how well you do those chemistry problems. Don't give me no sash. <laughs> Don't make me use this. Don't make me use this. All right, welcome. It's Coach Powers and his chem coach, and we're here to once again, hopefully, help you to have fun learning chemistry, to help you enjoy the beauty and the wonder of chemistry, and to hopefully understand chemistry. Uh, today we're going to be talking about reaction rates and rate laws, and um, a reaction rate is kind of like uh, we're going to do a little tie-in here to current events. It's kind of like a description of how quickly a population might get exposed to a pandemic. How many people are getting new coronavirus cases? How many people are testing positive in a particular area? And uh, so that's kind of like a reaction rate. And a rate law is a formula that would describe what kind of factors are actually at play and that would help you understand how quickly that population is going to expand into getting more and more cases, okay? So <clears throat> when we're done uh, with today's lessons, uh, we're going to be able to explain uh, that the rate of a chemical reaction refers to the changes in concentrations of the reactants um, or the products over time, okay? So as something is increasing in concentration does it change uh, the rate of the reaction um, that's what we want to look at and we also want to look at what the term order means okay um, and what is the order of a reaction how does it relate to the rate law formula that we're going to show you and also we want to understand what the rate constant k is and describe it in terms of concentration of the rate of reaction um, what I like about rate laws uh, is the mystery. It's kind of cool to um, think about the fact that we we understand that there are these regular patterns with how chemical reactions can take place, but we don't necessarily understand all the inner workings that are taking place behind them um, because in order to come up with a rate law, we have to do some experimentation. Okay, So we actually have to determine our rate laws through experimentation, and um, that tells you a little bit of something about how we are still learning a lot about chemistry. That's one of the beautiful things about chemistry, and why I hope you choose to study it um, even more, is that um, we're still learning tons of things. Uh, even today, uh, I was looking at uh, a, a little bit of a research on explosions, hydrogen and oxygen. You'd think, you know, burning hydrogen would be pretty well understood by now. And yeah, it's pretty well understood, but uh, uh, there's still stuff that we don't completely understand about how that reaction takes place. Um, and so it's just fascinating to see uh, how we can understand parts of things and not others. And I love looking at rate law because it just kind of opens that, you know, door of, that my, of my mind a little bit more and lets me understand 
we still have to figure out a lot of stuff here. Um, it's fun to see that we can come up with a law because we do experimentation, which is useful, but we don't necessarily understand the inner workings behind things yet. Um, so let's get started in covering um, this as you're looking at the screen. Uh, we're going to talk about how uh, the rate is a change in concentration of a reactant or product per unit time. So if you look at this formula, you can see the reaction rate. You have the formula, the concentration of substance A at uh, time two minus concentration of substance A at time one. So you're just subtracting those um, divided by the change in that time, right? So um, how much is the concentration of one thing changing um, over a period of time? Remember that reactants are going to be disappearing because they're turning into products, right? Um, and so we use a negative sign um, to the rate expression to um, to indicate you know what's happening there um, products are going to appear reactants are going to disappear and your units um, for reaction rate are basically the concentration per time uh, different than the units that we're going to talk about when we talk about um, our proportionality uh, constants okay so if we look at this next screen we can see we have a graph here and this graph shows um, some NO2 and that's the green line. You'll notice that the concentration of NO2, if you look at the formula, is going to be decreasing because that's on our reactant side. Um, and it's going to be turning into NO and O2. And so notice how the blue line is NO, the red line is O2, how that those two are actually increasing over time. So reactants decrease. Okay, they are disappearing while the products increase, they are appearing, right? Um, so a graph like this uh, can help you measure the disappearance of the reactants, the appearance of the products, and notice that they are proportional to their uh, stoichiometry uh, coefficient. So there's 2NO. You'll notice that in the, in the equation, you'll notice that the blue line has um, basically an average of twice as much as the red line because there's only one mole um, or the coefficient is one for the O2. Um, <clears throat> if we look at this next graph um, or the same graph but the next slide, uh, the change as your action proceeds can be noticed um, and you'll see the little triangle that we've drawn on the graph there um, as um, that NO is um, decreasing, you notice we kind of drew a tangent to that line, um, and then we kind of figured out, all right, well, this is what the change would be um, in these two. So the change as the reaction proceeds um, is dependent upon the concentration, okay? Um, and most reactions are going to be just like this. All right, so if we look at the next slide, um, remember that reactions don't have specific rates. Um, that the conditions like temperature are going to influence the rate of the reaction. Um, and for instance, like uh, we'll talk a little bit, or we'll show you a little bit more uh, about explosions, um, the increased temperature as the, uh, you know, increased amount of burning of whatever it is, you know, whatever gas that's burning, for instance, uh, as that increases, it just continues to increase and increase and increase. The rate will go higher and higher and higher. Um, remember that the rate is going to change during a reaction. Typically, we're talking about the rate going to zero, right? As we come and we make all of our products, that curve is gonna flatten out. Um, and so our products are gonna go up here, they're gonna curve and flatten out, and our reactants, oh, we're done using all those, they're gonna go down to the bottom. And again, just wanna emphasize over and over again that this is something that is determined experimentally. Okay, so our rate law. Um, let's kind of identify a couple of these different uh, variables as we're talking about a rate law. Again, remember the rate law is kind of like that mathematical formula that's telling us how uh, this reaction is going to increase, um, is it going to be, and we're going to talk about first order, second order, uh, how quickly is it going to uh, change. So first of all, let's just say we have a reaction, A plus B gives you C plus D, okay? Um, and if we were to write a rate law for this reaction, we're only going to include the reactants in this rate law. So you'll notice that I have the K, which we'll talk about here in a second, is the proportionality constant. The K times the concentration of A, remember that those brackets indicate concentration, uh, to the exponent of M times the concentration of B, that was the other reactant, to the concentration of N. Now, if you had multiple um, reactants, then you would add multiple letters in there. If you only had one reactant, you only have one letter in there, okay? So again, concentration is measured in molarity typically, and so uh, when we put that in brackets, that's what we're looking for. 
And that proportionality constant, also called a rate constant, um, is going to vary upon the uh, temperature. Um, and it's going to vary depending upon what kind of reaction you have. So hydrogen and oxygen reacting is going to be different than nitrogen uh, dioxide, you know, coming apart, for instance. Um, <clears throat> so remember that it relates the concentration of the reactant and the rate of the reactant. So, um, you know, I can say, all right, the concentration of this is such and such, and what's the rate going to be? That's what the proportionality constant is telling us. That proportionality constant can change, uh, for instance, with temperature. So if my temperature bumps up in a hydrogen burning uh, reaction, then that K is going to change as well, right? It's going to be bumping up. That proportionality constant is going to go up. So remember that the units are going to vary depending upon the order of the reaction. I'll tell you what an order is here in a second, but um, you can have different... Um, units okay so that's kind of it might seem kind of confusing but k um, is going to change depending upon what order reaction you deal with so let's look at um, m and n remember those are exponents um, our concentrations of a and b in this case um, and that's the power to which those concentrations are going to be raised and that's indicating the rate uh, sorry the degree to which the concentration of a reactant affects the overall rate of the reaction Okay, so um, it, this is basically something that we're going to use to determine the order of our reaction. So if I say I have a second order reaction, I'm using these exponents of my reactants to come up with that terminology. Um, what does it mean? It just means that reaction is taking place a little bit faster. Um, remember again that these are determined experimentally, not from the stoichiometrical coefficients, although those can sometimes uh, be the same. So let's look at the slide. We have zero as an order, okay? So if I have a zero order reaction, basically that means if I change my concentration, nothing is happening to the rate of the reaction. Nothing's happening to the speed the reaction is taking place. If I have a first order reaction, that's a directly proportional reaction. And so if I'm doubling the concentration, then I'm going to double the rate of the reaction, okay? And if I have a second order reaction, um, then this is proportional to a square, and so I would say, okay, well, if I double my concentration, I'm quadrupling my rate, and so um, you can have more than second-order reactions. I'm just showing you two here. Um, if I had a bigger reaction that had multiple uh, components to it, I might have a third-order uh, reaction, etc. We don't really see very many examples of those um, in the, you know, common chemistry literature, but, uh, they do have some examples out there. So, um, so let's look at a first, uh, example here. I have a reaction where NO is going to be formed and turned into N2O plus NO2. And so remember this rate law is determined experimentally. Okay. So I can't just look at that and say, oh yeah, that, that, that's, that, that's the rate law. No, I, I'm going to be given the rate law because I took some data. I did a little experiment. I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to have you. I'm going to put a link on a on this video to um, a portion of another video that shows you how um, glucose can transform and change some of these solutions blue based upon certain things like temperature and the concentration of various things. So we would do something experimentally to get this rate law, okay? And so, but if I can look at this rate law, I can see the NO in brackets, and I can see a little two as the exponent. That little two as an exponent tells me, ah, this is a second order reaction, okay? So it's a second order reaction for NO, because the two is on top of the NO, right? Um, the two is the exponent on the concentration of NO. So it's a second order for NO. And overall, it's a second order reaction because there's nothing else to add there. It's just NO with the two on it, okay? Remember again that the coefficient uh, in front of the NO is a three in the reaction. So the coefficient is not corresponding to that exponent, okay? So keep that in mind, that's important. Next slide. You can see another uh, example. It has NO2 plus CO gives you NO plus CO2. And in this case, we've given you the rate law. How do we figure out the rate law? Experimentally, powers. Thank you. It's very good. Thank you. Um, K, okay, proportionality constant times the concentration of NO2, and it has a 2 on top of it. That 2 on top of it means it's a what order? Second order for NO2. And overall, since I had CO on the reactant side, notice that there's no CO in my rate law, which means that CO is not affecting it at all. No matter how much CO I put in there, it doesn't affect it. Now, this could be something like what we saw before where, <coughs> excuse me, you have um, an intermediate, right, involved, um, but this would not be the rate determining step, right? CO is not part of the rate determining step, and so it doesn't affect the rate of the reaction. The NO2 is the rate determining step. All right, so this could be a multi-step reaction. CO does not 
involve uh, is CO's concentration doesn't change it at all. Um, but overall, then, if we add the CO and the NO2 together, it's still a second order reaction overall because there's only the NO2 that really has anything to do with it. Let's look at our next example. Um, this is 2NO2 gives you the 2NO plus O2, and the rate law in this case is NO2, um, and it has that uh, two exponent on top. It looks the same rate law, right? So this reaction, different reaction, but it has the same rate law. Uh, we can again look at the order of the actual um, reaction for NO2. It's a second order for NO2, and overall, second order, why? Because there's only one reactant, so if there's only one reactant, whatever that reactant is, is going to be the order for it. And then we have our final example here. And so I have hydrogen peroxide 2H2O, and it's reactant give you 2H2O, uh, sorry, 2H2O2, reacts to give you 2H2O plus O2, and that rate law is K times H2O2. So the only thing that's affecting this order is obviously the only reactant. And even though there's a 2 in front, that coefficient is not telling you what that, you know, square is going to be. It's not going to be a square in this case, even though there's a 2 coefficient. We had to determine experimentally, right? So in this case, it's a first order reaction because there's no exponent on top of that H2O2. So if I double the concentration of H2O2, what's going to happen to my overall rate of my reaction? It's going to double, okay? So it's a direct proportionality. If this is a first order uh, reaction, then it's direct proportionality. And that's what this is. It's a first order reaction for H2O2 and for the order overall. Now let's look at this final slide. <clears throat> And in this final slide, you can see um, I want you to practice. Um, and so mentally, I'm going to let you kind of work through this one as I'm talking through it. I've got 2 of chemical A plus B gives you A2B as a new compound. And I've determined the rate law for you. Um, experimentally, we went through and did this uh, rate, and we found out that it was K times the concentration of A squared, then that times the concentration of B. Okay, so let's see if we can answer these questions, right? What's the order in A? So what do I do to find the order? I look for the exponent. Very good. So the order in A, it's got a two exponent. Therefore, it is a second order uh, reaction in A, okay, just for A. And then the order for B, if I look at B, it has a one or nothing on top of it, right? It's an exponent. Basically, it's the same as having a one there. And so in this case, this is a first order for B, what's the overall order? Hmm. Okay, remember I said that if you add these things up, that's how you would get the overall order. So I've got to add the two up and the one up, and I get a three as my overall order in this case. What would happen if the rate of A, uh, or sorry, what would happen to the rate if A concentration was doubled? So I've got to look at A. A's got second order on it, which means that if I double something, I've got to quadruple it. Very good. Okay, so uh, the rate would quadruple if I doubled the concentration of A. What would happen to the rate if B was doubled? Well, B is a first order, right? And so if I double the concentration of B, I'm going to double. Yeah, uh, double the uh, actual amount of uh, the rate, sorry, of the reaction. So, um, <clears throat> One of my favorite things about this concept um, is uh, kind of like the, what they call sometimes a blue bottle reaction. So I'm going to show you an example of that and give you a link to that so you can look at how the reaction will change depending upon the temperature and or depending upon the concentration of the various different reactants. Okay, and then the other thing that uh, I think as far as my favorite kind of experience experiments <laughs> uh, with rate law has to do with explosions um, because when you think about it explosions are really all about uh, increasing rate um, of reactions super super fast reactions that uh, just you know go crazy um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a link to one of these explosions I also found um, just Hello, a, I'm Gav. I'm precious document. Um, it's a 1979 uh, document from uh, NASA, and it's a, a couple of these scientists at NASA doing some experiments and talking about how hydrogen and oxygen react together uh, to form. Uh, basically, you know, how is it that they form water when hydrogen burns? And you know, this reaction, which I, I think maybe I had seen this before, but it just shocked me to see it again. 
Um, just the simple reaction of hydrogen and oxygen coming together can have like seven different steps that they've, or eight or nine, I forget how many different steps that they've identified. I'll show you the link and you can look at it yourself. Um, so all these different little sub steps, right? These small steps. Okay, I've got to break this bond between this hydrogen and this hydrogen. I'm going to form another bond over here between this one part of the hydrogen and one part of oxygen. Um, just all sorts of crazy fun cool stuff um, <clears throat> and you can see how something as simple as hydrogen burning can be a pretty complex reaction um, and now they've done lots of studies with this stuff they talk about chain reactions um, and uh, and a bunch of stuff that whew, goes over my head uh, but it's a lot of fun to see the math that's involved and you know if you just you know just dug yourself into this stuff and you just were like, you love math and you love science man some of this stuff is just gonna just tickle your funny bone um, you're just gonna love it um, so anyway, uh, explosions, I'm going to have some links to um, some slow-mo explosions because we know that we all have to watch explosions, right? So I'm going to have you get the chance to see some explosions. <laughs> um, so your objectives. Okay, what, uh, what we've learned today. Uh, we can now explain that the rate of the chemical reaction um, is going to refer to the change of the concentration of the reactants um, or the products over time. And we can explain what the order of a reaction is, right? Um, we can talk about that order being how quickly the reaction is taking place. Um, and then we can relate that to the rate law. We can tell that the order has to do with those little exponents, right? Um, and then we can describe the rate constant. It's a proportionality constant, right? And it refers to the concentration um, and the rate of the reaction. It's a proportionality for how much concentration and how much rate. And so, um, like I said, with a water the you know creating water with a hydrogen explosion if you have increased heat then your k values are just gonna you know skyrocket when you increase the temperature you're going to increase the rate um because that proportion of what the concentration is going to do to the rate really exponentially goes up fast so um anyway i hope you had fun uh learning today don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet um hit like and leave any comments okay if you don't have if you have any comments and have any questions please Leave them, and I'll try to get to those. Um, if you're confused about any of this stuff, um, go back and watch it again. Uh, hopefully, it'll make more sense a second time through. I know that I have to go through this stuff several times to get it because, you know, um, I'm, uh, I'm a little slow sometimes. So, yeah, I just do the best I can. <laughs> you should, too. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. It was... Uh, Great having you working with me today. This is Coach Powers with Chem Coach, and I appreciate you watching. Have an awesome day. He loves chemistry because it's fun. That, that makes it crazy, crazy. Then he's the one to teach you chemistry because it's fun. He's a chemistry coach. Do, do, do. He's a chemistry coach. Yeah. <laughs>